Right. Um, so thank you all very much for, for having and attending this talk. I don't think I've ever seen such a big online audience. So well done uh, to the organizers. Um, yes, so I will be um, talking about open global footing invariants and how you can obtain them from the Fukaya category. Um, and to start with, let me give you some background on like closed common written invariants and homological mirror symmetry. So the, the starting point is like, as with a lot of things in, in symplectic topology, it comes from mirror symmetry. And for me, that will always mean, well, in this talk, that will mean closed Calabi-Yau uh, manifolds. So if we have X, some, some closed Calabi-Yau with a symplectic form, that, and that's mirror to some space Y, where we consider Y as a complex space with the complex structure J, then a numerative mirror symmetry for this pair says that the Gromov of Witten invariants of X are in some way corresponding to period integrals of Y. And remember that Gromov of Witten invariants are counts of rational curves inside your space X with certain cohomological constraints. I will later draw some pictures if you haven't seen this before. Um, and in, in general, global written invariants are really hard to compute, uh, whereas period integrals are often a bit easier. Um, then later, Konzefi's conjecture that if spaces are mirrored, there should also be some homological symmetry between these spaces X and Y. And in this case, that means for the symplectic space X, we should associate to it the Fukaya category of X, and to Y, we should associate the derived category of coherent sheaves. And he conjectured if X and Y are mirror, then there's a quasi equivalence between these two categories. And moreover, he conjectured that if that is the case, then indeed it is going to be the case that the Gromov of Witten invariants and the period integrals correspond to each other. So, in particular, from the Fukaya category, you can obtain closed Gromov of Witten invariants. Let me say closed. Now, why is this interesting? It's because before, when people proved enumerative mirror symmetry, all the proofs, at least that I know of, go as follows. You compute all Gromov of Witten invariants, and you compute all period integrals, and then you do some transformation, and you see, oh, they are the same. So we have proven enumerative mirror symmetry. But from the point of view of computing Gromov of Witten invariants, that's not very interesting, because you've computed them already, and then you say, oh, well, they're the same as the other thing that we can compute. Whereas if you've proven homological mirror symmetry, uh, which often involves like matching up some objects and then checking some relations. And then if you can get for that from free that the enumerative invariants are going to be associated, then you suddenly get the statement that you can actually compute all Gromov of Witten invariants by just computing the period integrals. So you don't need to do something complicated to actually like determine your closed Gromov of Witten invariants. So in that, in that sense, it's, it's a very nice result. And let me say about this that in determining closed Gromov of Witten invariants from the Fukaya category, this was done by Ganatra, Roots, and Sheridan. This work announced in 2015. Unfortunately, it's not yet out in the archive. So, uh, yes, hopefully at some point. And on the B side, I won't say anything about it how you can obtain period integrals from the category of coherent sheets. Okay, so this is all story about closed Gromov-Witten invariants. And then recently, uh, this is work of Johannes Walcher. He extended the enumerative mirror symmetry by including counts of open Gromov-Witten invariants. And these are counts now holomorphic disks with boundary on the Lagrangian. I'll draw a picture in a second. Um, this should be mirror to something determined, which we'll call extended period integrals, but I won't say anything about them in this talk. And then, of course, a natural conjecture to make is that it is indeed possible from the Fukaya category to obtain these open Gromov of Witten invariants, and similarly uh, uh, to obtain extended period integrals from the category of coherent sheets. And this talk is exactly about obtaining open Gromov of Witten invariants from the Fukaya category. Okay, so what, what are open Gromov-Witten invariants? Intuitively, uh, 
the, the, the way you want to find them is, is as follows. You have your Lagrangian L, and you're counting holomorphic disks with boundary on that Lagrangian, and you're taking some constraints along cycles in X. So the inputs here are just some cycle C1, C2, C3, which are just in X. And you're counting the number, number of these disks like that. But in general, this number might not be well defined because there's two things that can happen in, the, in, in it's this, this move around in the moduli space. One of them is that the disks break up and you get two disks. Uh, and that, that can be canceled using a bounding code chain, which we won't talk about today. But the other phenomenon that can happen is that the boundary of the disks contracts to a point, so forming a sphere. So like, what does that look like? If you have L, then instead what you get is a bubble like this. With these constraints like that. So in order to cancel that contribution, you assume that the homology class of L inside the nth homology of X is zero. And then you choose a cycle C inside X, such that the boundary of C is exactly the Lagrangian. And then you add an extra contribution to this original count of disks. And that is going to be holomorphic spheres that pass through C, and then with your cycle constraint C1, C2, C3. So in this picture, this total sum would be the open goal of Witten invariant of the cycle C1, C2, C3. Okay. And what is what is the, the main result that we sort of we hope for is that we can obtain these open goal of Witten invariants from the Bogaya category. Now, how does this go? So as I mentioned, there's a result already for closed chrome of Witten invariants. And the closed chrome of Witten for by Gnatra, Perutz, and Sheridan, and that goes by the language of variations of Hodge structures. So what are and what that? I won't define them in general, but I will give the main example. And the main example is the quantum BHH, which is modeled on quantum cohomology. And to make things easier, instead of working with cohomology classes, I will take the point dual of everything and talk about cycles instead. So what, what this is in my notation, I will take this to be the homology of X and the coefficients lie inside the Novikov field. And for me, the Novikov field has parameter small q. And then the data of the BHS on this variation of which structures is a connection, which is uh, a map with which satisfies the Leibniz rule with respect to the variable Q. And how is it defined? Well, an element in here can be represented by a cycle. And on a cycle C, it is given by where well, you take the derivative with respect to Q of that cycle, because it might have Q dependence. And then you add the quantum cup product with the symplectic form of that cycle. And what does this mean in, in sort of a picture notation? You're taking the following cycle. You're considering all holomorphic spheres inside X with a constraint along the Poincaré dual of omega with a constraint along your cycle C. And then you evaluate and see what cycle this modulized space sweeps out in your target space. And this defines for you the, a new cycle inside X, which is the cycle omega star C. So the data of this uh, vector space over the Novikov field together with this connection, plus some extra data, which is a filtration, but I won't talk about that. This data together is what I will call as the quantum VHS. And what Ganatra, Perutz, and Sheridan show is that the quantum VHS, the H star of X, determines closed chromo Witten invariance. Unfortunately, I won't have time to delve into the proof, but in some way it, it amounts to checking that this quantum VHS, that this connection has certain properties which allow you to basically determine what the uh, what the matrix uh, 
of quantum coproducts by omega is in a specific basis, and that gives rise to your probability invariance. Okay, so that's the first step in showing that sort of we can obtain gold with the range from this uh, quantum VHS. Then the next thing that they show is that this is already a construction that was made before for any A infinity category, is that you can associate to an A infinity category the negative cyclic homology. And this is a VHS as well. It comes now with a natural variation of Hodge structures. And then they show that there exists a map from the negative cyclic homology to the category to the quantum VHS, is called the negative cyclic open closed map. And in good cases, this is an isomorphism of VHS. It is always expected to be a morphism of VHS, but in good cases, in, in particular in the cases they consider for calamias, it's going to be an isomorphism. So then you have shown that you can obtain close coefficient and invariance from the negative cyclic homology to fire for Gaia category. Okay, so, just, so to extend this story then to open Grobov Witten invariants, we really want to package open Grobov Witten invariants also into some VHS um, and sort of take a similar approach. Unfortunately, this was already done by, by other people. Uh, so this is by work by Solomon and Tukaczynski. They show that you can associate two open Grobov Witten invariants also some VHS. And that's called the relative quantum cohomology. So given, given some Lagrangian L inside X, you can associate the relative quantum cohomology, which in, in this location is the homology of the following cone complex. So you take the cone over the map from cycles on X, no, no, the other way around, from the integers to cycles on X, given by sending one to the cycle represented by our Lagrangian. And we take coefficients in a Novikov field. So what is this cone complex? If the Lagrangian is no homologous, this is just a one dimensional extension of the uh, homology of X. And then they equip this with a connection. What is the connection? An element in here, we can represent by a scalar A and a cycle uh, I've used the patient C already, uh, alpha. So A is in, in the Novikov field and alpha is a cycle. Well, on the, the scalar, we just take the derivative with respect to Q. And on the scalar, on the cycle alpha, well, this is the original connection we already had, that was the absolute quantum connection. But now we add an additional term to it, which is A times the following cycle, which is where we take our Lagrangian L, we consider the moduli space of spheres of the disks with boundary on the Lagrangian, with one marked point to lie on the Poincaré dual of omega, and with an extra marked point that we use to evaluate a cycle. So this, again, this moduli space sweeps out a cycle and that defines our new cycle. And it's a very pleasant exercise to check that indeed this definition is well-defined. So this takes care of the bubbling that can happen. Uh -huh. And that's precisely because we consider the homology of this kind of complex. So this equips relative quantum cohomology with a uh, connection. And in fact, this forms a VHS as well. Uh, what I show then is that indeed the quantum this this relative um, quantum VHS knows about open Gromov Witten invariants. And I should be specific there, it knows only if the, what I've checked so far, it knows only about the one point open Gromov Witten invariants. By one point, I mean that there's only one interior constraint uh, on your disks. So that's not all of them, but it's a, it's a first step, uh, which hopefully can be extended. Okay. So the next step then, if we want to obtain open goal of written invariance from the Fukaya category, is to associate such an, such an extension to, to the Fukaya category as well. Um, so how does that go? This is part of a more general construction, but let, let me give you an example. Is we take the following functor. So we take the trivial category, 
with one object and with morphism space given by the logical field into the Fukaya category. What does it do? It sends our only object to the Lagrangian L, and it sends the unit in the logical field to the unit of the Lagrangian. And here I'm implicitly assuming that our Fukaya category is strictly unital, but let's let's assume that we can do that. Um, so we have that functor, and then we consider the induced map on negative cyclic chains. If you haven't never seen this before, don't worry, it will not really come up, crop up in the definition. You will need to know exactly what it is. So you take the induced map on negative cyclic chains, and you take the homology of the cone over this map. So it's a very similar construction to like what we had before. And then what, what, what I show is that you can equip this with a PHS and the sort of a natural, natural categorical construction. Um, and again, sort of this, this, this comes from a, from a more general construction, but this is, this is a specific example. But in particular, this is canonically associated with the Fukaya category and doesn't require any sort of additional input to, of the finding moduli spaces. Um, so then the, the, the natural conjecture to make is that then indeed that there exists some map, which is called the, the relative cyclic open closed map, that maps, uh, let me give this a name. Well, it's a negative cyclic homology of the Fukaya category of X relative to Lagrangian L. And there exists a natural map that maps this relative negative cyclic homology to the relative quantum VHS. And this should be an isomorphism of VHS. Um, unfortunately, in, in, in the Calabria setting, the, the sort of the, the techniques I've used are they don't have access to, to the Calabria setting. Uh, but at least what I was able to do is show this in a very specific uh, setup. So I show uh, under technical assumptions, which are the same. Uh, as the ones that Solomon and Tukaczynski use uh, to define open form of written invariance. Uh, so, then it, there indeed exists not a full map on the Fukaya category, but a map just on negative cyclic homology of the Fleur cohomology of a single Lagrangian. And the object is also the Lagrangian to the relative quantum cohomology. But now, of course, you can't expect this to be an isomorphism of VHS, but this is just a morphism of VHS. Um, yes, but if you assuming if you assume the conjecture, conjecture. What do you obtain? Well, you obtain, because we have this relative cyclic open closed map, uh, and we know that the relative quantum cohomology knows about open chrome of Witten invariance, we obtain that the Fukaya category of X determines at least the one point open chrome of Witten invariance of X. Um, yes, let me stop there, because I think I'm out of time. Thank you, Kai, for the talk. It's very nice. Um, questions? No Can questions. you say again what, the, uh, what, what, what were the technical assumptions? Can you maybe just say it out loud? Yes, I did not. I did not say them uh, at all. So these are these are the same as what uh, Solomon Tukaczynski used, and they are that the moduli spaces of disks with boundary with Lagrangian are smooth orbifolds with quarters. Uh, that is not a very uh, 
heavy assumption with the main one is that the evaluation at the boundary marked point needs to be a proper submersion, and that is a very strict one. Um, but I mean, as as they believe as well, is like if, if you work with fun, virtual fundamental classes, then all, all the problems disappear. But they they chose to work in this setup because it's just nicer and technically easier to understand. But you still need Kalabiao, even even uh, or no, no. So in 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 their setup, actually, is is I think there are no Kalabiao examples. Uh, so what, what these can be curved uh, infinity algebras and so on. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So like the 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 main situation actually, which this is going to like my theorem actually holds, is for CPN with real locus or CPN with um, the Clifford torus. I also have, well, I guess I, you lost me in this. Uh, so when you state this theorem, you have this uh, bar complex for L, in which you say there's a morphism. Um, so what is the relationship between this map and the one that you conjecture should be an isomorphism? So there always exists a map just from, like, Basically, the, the, the pure cohomology of a single Lagrangian, you can include inside the whole Fukaya category. Mm -hmm. That's just, um, and I guess, there, yeah, there's just a, exists a functor. So there's going to be a map from the negative cyclic homology of uh, the Fleur cohomology to the negative cyclic homology of the Fukaya category. And that will also induce a map from uh, this whole guy to the negative cyclic homology of the Fugai relative to your Lagrangian. But there is no sort of guarantee that this map will be an inclusion or, yeah. But oh, I mean, sense. similarly, if you, if you are in a very hopeful situation where you, like you could just take a generating set for your Fugai category and just take the direct sum of all those Lagrangians. And in some way, that is a very valid thing to do. So if you, if you would be able to deal with technicalities where it sort of your Lagrange, if your Lagrangians intersect in some way, that's not that's not the biggest problem in this setup. Um, so in that sense, you could you could just as well assume that your Fukaya category really only has one object, uh, which is a direct sum of these Lagrangians. So, so if you had a bunch of generators, you could do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any any other questions? Okay, so in that case, we thank the speaker again. Thanks, Kai, uh, for the talk. Um,